Okay, so I'm going to read from Phoenix Claw, uh, from Black Crane's Tales of Unquiet Women, and I'm going to read from my story Phoenix Claws, um, which is set in Wellington, um, about now. The first claws turned up on Wednesday, four spindly yellow-coated limbs. I found them in my kitchen sink. At first I thought they were a prank, a sick joke left by Pete, or maybe even Finn. But Pete would have dropped by just to see my reaction, and I doubted Finn even knew where to buy them. I was ravenous, and it seemed a shame to waste them, so I clipped off the curled toenails with a pair of kitchen shears, peeled away the yellow skin, and boiled them up for dinner. There were four more in the sink when I got up the next day. I found another four congealing in my handbag. If Pete was behind it, I'd kill him. Only in my heart I knew it wasn't Pete. Kinza was barely two and there was no way a sleep-deprived dad would get up that early for a prank he wouldn't see play out. Besides, Pete didn't have a key to my place. I bundled up the chicken claws and stuck them out the back in the compost bin. By Friday, my rubbish bin was overflowing. I had to arrange for an additional collection, but even though I paid the extra fee, the council wouldn't collect more than twice a week. The compost was already full and I shouldn't have been putting meat waste in there anyway. The couple over the back fence had left a note complaining about the smell. I had no choice but to eat them. I cooked the claws in batches of 40. With a growing sense of dislocation, I boiled and soaked them. Boiled and soaked. Boiled and soaked. I stayed up until the sink was empty. After a week, my freezer was loaded with stiff white claws. I had containers of cooked claws stacked on every shelf in the fridge. With barely any space for anything else, I was eating them for every meal. It was all I could do to keep the house clear of them. No sooner had I emptied the sink and they were back again. Keeping them hidden from Finn was even harder. I started leaving work early to clear away the piles of withered claws that had appeared while I was out. Then, one Thursday, our usual takeout night, Finn arrived with a massaman lamb curry. The spicy odour made my mouth water. By now, I was practically living on chicken feet grinding my way through plate after bony plate of them. I'd eaten hundreds of the gangly appendages with their severed rodent tail sinews, chewed on enough mouthfuls of glutinous white paste to make me want to gag. No wonder my focus wavered when the smell of curried lamb permeated the kitchen. I didn't see Finn head to the fridge for a drink. What's this, he said, opening a plastic Tupperware, where three dozen claws were soaking in vinegar. He peeped into the container. Hurrying over, I pushed him aside and thumped the lid down. They're chicken feet, I said, shoving the container back to the back of the shelf. Finn stepped backwards with a look of disgust. He pressed his back against the counter. I can see that, he said. Why do you have so many? Thrusting a bear at him, I slammed the fridge shut. They were on special, and I like them, I insisted. Loose, it's fine, he said, straightening up. I'm not going to tell you what you can and can't eat. But when he cracked open his beer, the sound, like an accusation, bounced around the kitchen. He threw the cap in the bin. Later that evening, when Finn had gone home and I was clearing away the takeout containers, I spied the sh shiny bottle cap floating on a sea of chicken lilies.